Live breaking news from News Channel 12. Good evening and thanks for joining us for News Channel 12 at 6. I'm Janelle Padilla. Scott Hennessy is working from home. We'll check in with him in a moment. We begin with breaking news. Federal manslaughter charges have been filed against the captain of the Conception dive boat. News Channel 12's Tracy Lair is at Santa Barbara Harbor with more. I'm out here by the Conception Memorial and they never found an exact cause of this tragedy, but they are finding someone to blame. An L.A. grand jury found the Conception Captain Jerry Boylan negligent and that led to the filing of federal manslaughter charges. Even investigators said it was hard to call the fiery death of 33 passengers and a female crew member an accident. The grand jury said the captain failed to have fire drills and a night watchman. Evidence shows the captain made a mayday call around 3.14 a.m. September 2nd of 2019 saying I can't breathe then abandoned the ship with three other crew members who were asleep at the time of that fire on the top deck. Evidence also shows some passengers had shoes on but could not get out of the hatch from their bunk area below. We'll have more reaction tonight at 11. I'm News Channel 12 reporter Tracy Lair. Santa Barbara County COVID-19 numbers are up, but compared to the rest of the Tri-County area, it's the lowest. News Channel 12 reporter John Palminteri explains this could have a direct impact on the Christmas holiday season. The COVID-19 report card is showing an upward trend in cases in Santa Barbara County, much like the rest of the state. Santa Barbara County is experiencing a significant increase in cases, testing positivity and hospitalization for the last two weeks. Speaking to Santa Barbara County's Board of Supervisors, the county health director said key areas of concern were clerical workers, those 18 and under, and the retired and unemployed. One area with a new increase is Lompoc, but compared to San Luis Obispo and Ventura counties, our cases are um, less than neighboring jurisdictions, and that is a clearly a reflection of, you know, our community, you know, trying very, very hard to do the right thing and to resist the spread of the virus. The county has also been updated on the vaccine distribution ahead of how it will encourage the public to take part in the plan to utilize our existing trusted leaders in a partnership in in providing that information. But there are still many unanswered questions about the number of people who can get vaccinated in each phase, how it will be done and where. If you recall, the drive through flu shots were said to be a test process that could be used for the COVID-19 vaccine. More information will be out later this month. To f even get all the phase one um, folks vaccinated are just guesstimates at this point. We don't really know precisely what is going to be available and what quantities. In Santa Barbara, John Paul and Terry, News Channel 12. Santa Barbara County announced a new COVID death today. The person was between 50 and 69 with underlying medical conditions. They lived in Santa Barbara and the unincorporated area of Mission Canyon. 137 people have died from coronavirus across the county so far. Santa Barbara County reported 29 new COVID cases today. That's lower than the daily counts we've seen recently, but public health says it's because fewer people were tested over the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. We will likely see an increase over the next couple of days. There are 394 active cases. 39 people are hospitalized, including seven in the intensive care unit. More than 11,000 people have recovered. Santa Maria has 4,657 cases. Santa Barbara has 1,617 and Lompoc has 1,154. San Luis Obispo County remains in the purple or most restrictive tier. The county reported 34 new cases today. There are now 908 active cases. Eight people are hospitalized with one in the intensive care unit. More than 5,300 people have recovered. Paso Robles has the highest number of cases with 1,542. San Luis Obispo has 1,492. Atascadero is third highest with 555. And 855 Cal Poly students have tested positive. CIF announced today it is canceling all regional and state championship events for the fall sports season. According to CIF, the change was made after California Public Health postponed issuing new guidance on high school sports. Officials say they don't expect to allow schools to return to full practice until January 1st. As a result, practices and competitions are now on hold. 
Now to more troubling news about California's unemployment system. News Channel 12 anchor CJ Ward reports dozens of state lawmakers want to know why Bank of America is siphoning money out of bank accounts belonging to unemployed Californians. Our sister stations in Los Angeles and San Francisco broke the story. They're reporting that people who received unemployment payments through the EDD, the State Employment Development Department, claim that Bank of America took money out of their bank accounts without warning or explanation. In some cases, people reported that B of A froze their account. And when they called to get answers, they say Bank of America reopened their account, but all of the money was gone. In one case, an unemployed hotel worker told KGO-TV the bank took almost $17,000 out of his account. Unemployed workers from all over California say the same thing is happening to them. They say Bank of America took the money they need to live on because they lost their job when the pandemic hit. California has a contract with Bank of America to process the state's unemployment claims. B of A has similar contracts with other states. A bipartisan group of 59 California lawmakers sent a letter to Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan demanding answers. The news channel has spent the last six months investigating the massive fraud involving the EDD. In September, we asked Bank of America if it was investigating fraud within its own system, specifically problems at its facility in Gray, Tennessee, which processes the debit cards that are mailed out to Californians receiving benefits. A bank spokesperson at the time declined to answer that question, but she did confirm that Bank of America is working with EDD to stop the fraud. C.J. Ward, News Channel 12. We put written statements from both Bank of America and the California EDD on our mobile app and website at KCOY.com. A popular holiday tradition that supports local businesses in Arroyo Grande kicks off today, looking much different than in years past. News Channel 12's Dave Alley is live in Arroyo Grande to explain. Dave. And Janelle, the historic village of Arroyo Grande is always quite a sight during the holiday season. The, the lights and the decorations uh, making for a memorable experience each year. And so too does Elegant Christmas in the Village. It's an annual one-night event that always draws hundreds of visitors here and is a huge boost to local businesses. But due to the pandemic, uh, could not be held uh, this year in its normal format. But some big changes are now in place to keep it going. It's officially Christmas time in the village of Arroyo Grande. It's beautiful. Uh, the lights are out. You have that atmosphere of a time to celebrate. And for businesses here, a time to shop. It's so important for the community to support our businesses so we can stay afloat. Especially true this year. With COVID, uh, the numbers rising, people are losing their business, they're losing money, and um, it's a hard time. And we can really, really, really use your support. To encourage that, the annual Elegant Christmas in the Village is being modified. Thank you. Changing from a popular one-night event to a shopping experience that lasts all of December. This gets people down here more and hopefully, you know, they're willing to spend their money everywhere down here. If they do, shoppers can participate in a newly created social media promotion. And if they shop in one of the village businesses or they dine or wine taste, they can tag the chamber and the village that they're visiting and they'll be entered to win a prize. That includes gift cards, dinners, and a local staycation package. I think it's great. It's a great way for them to still kind of be alive during this time. So yeah, I'll definitely be taking advantage of that. Shoppers can take part in any of the businesses here along Branch Street and the surrounding area. That includes retail stores, restaurants, salons, and many others. Come down and enjoy the small town feel. Um, we'll come enjoy us with open arms, but we won't give you a hug. <laughs> uh, we'll give you a fist bump in the air. And again, this is all being done with uh, safety in mind due to the pandemic. Uh, so shoppers, uh, uh, as we certainly know, once they go inside, they will be required to wear a mask. And all shop owners here, they will strictly be observing all COVID guidelines and capacity limits. Reporting live in Arroyo Grande, Dave Valley, News Channel 12. Looks quite festive out there, especially at night. Thanks, Dave. For this year's Christmas tree lighting at Santa Maria City Hall, the Recreation and Parks Department will hold a virtual ceremony. News Channel 12 reporter Patricia Martellotti joins us live to share how it's going. Okay, so Mr. Smitherman will start the countdown. The spirits are high here outside City Hall, and they're just about to light up the tree, so I'm going to let you take a look. One, go ahead. 
Flick the switch over, and where's the treat? Yay! Great. Uh, there like it is, here, just in time. You can see that this Thank is a 24-foot Christmas tree. The tree is uh, eight years old. It was purchased through community donations, and the community I, is I asked not to uh, Alex, attend for safety reasons, but the city is live streaming it on the Recreation on, so and Parks Facebook page. Uh, some of the speakers during this ceremony you can hear right now is uh, Mayor Alice Patino, so as well as Alex Posada with the Recreation and Parks. And this tree will be lit up throughout the entire holiday season outside of City Hall. For now, live in Santa Maria, Patricia Martellotti, News Channel 12. Patricia, that was perfect timing. I love seeing all these holiday festivities. Thank you. Still ahead on News Channel 12 at 6, students hoping to go to college get a little more time to apply. Why some universities are pushing back the deadline. And a burglary at a Central Coast organization has a rippling effect, creating a hardship for many in need this holiday season. Just when the Central Coast Rescue Mission in Santa Maria was gearing up for the holiday season, managers woke up to a couple of stolen catalytic converters from their pickup trucks. Managers with the Rescue Mission, which services homeless neighbors, say these trucks are a major part of the ministry, helping hundreds of people in need across the Central Coast. They say the donations they pick up go to some of the most vulnerable people in the community. While they're still able to pick up donations using a rented moving truck, managers say it will cost several thousand dollars for both replacements. People are desperate in 2020, and I'm sure that's a lot of what's fueling that, but my hope is that they stop doing this, that we're able to recover from this and, and keep helping the most vulnerable in our community. The rescue mission says it will be at least another two to three weeks before their trucks are fully repaired. One of many local nonprofits in need of donations and volunteers on this Giving Tuesday is Community Partners in Caring. The organization helps seniors live independently. News Channel 12 anchor Scott Hennessy joins us live with their mission and call for help. Janelle, the coronavirus pandemic has made life lonely and challenging for seniors living at home. There is a local nonprofit group that is really working to make sure that these seniors get the food and medicine they need delivered directly to their home. And volunteers who are taking that food and medicine are also bringing some much needed human connection. Community Partners in Caring has provided volunteer support services to seniors in Santa Barbara County since 1997. They help seniors live independently and they've never been as busy as they are today. Before the pandemic started, they served about 350 clients. Today, they help over 850 seniors. The group used to focus on giving seniors rides and integrating them into the community, but that changed when stay-at-home orders were issued in March. Now they're all about keeping seniors safe while letting them know there's a community that cares for them. Our volunteers have just said how rewarding of an, it is of an experience to show how a simple act of just them going to the grocery store or them giving one of our seniors a ride to a medically necessary appointment, how, um, how much it transforms not just the senior's day, but their life. It, this group is based in Santa Maria with an office, office in Lompoc, and it serves all of Santa Barbara County. Now, there are many great nonprofits that you can look to help out on this Giving Tuesday. If you'd like to learn more about this one, we have all the information you need to volunteer or donate money, which they certainly also need up on our website. You'll find it in this story. Reporting live in Santa Barbara County, I'm News Channel 12 anchor Scott Hennessy. Their work makes such an impact. Thank you, Scott. Students applying to the Cal State system will have a couple more weeks to turn in their applications for fall of 2021. The deadline is now December 15th. Students interested in attending any Cal State University, including Cal Poly, can apply at the university's application portal. The deadline was extended due to admission challenges caused by the pandemic. And Julia Espinoza is keeping a close eye on the forecast. Julia, as we've seen, it's starting to look a lot like the holidays, but it feels more like summer. 
The spirit of the holidays is definitely here and to welcome in December 1st, those temperatures were well above average as you put it. At this hour, we still have a spot that's in the 70s when it comes to Pismo Beach, exactly at 70 degrees. But if you are right along the central coast, Santa Maria, San Inez and Lompoc, we're now in the 50s with Santa Maria exactly at 53 degrees, Santa Barbara 61, San Luis Obispo checking in at 68 degrees. So those areas that are a bit warmer than the rest of us are still dealing with those gusty northerly winds ranging about 10 to 20 miles per hour. It is sustained breezy conditions so we're Pismo Beach at 10 miles per hour. So for that reason, their temperature is still pretty warm, but as we head towards our overnight hours, it's expected to be a very chilly night and as we start off our Wednesday morning as well. For Santa Maria, we have the potential to cool down to 39 degrees. San Luis Obispo, lower 40s. It gets colder out towards Paso Robles as you're going to be dropping down to 29 degrees and with the temperature below 35 degrees, you do have the potential to be seeing some areas of frost develop overnight. Tomorrow morning, we're also going to be seeing something different. We have the potential for some patchy stratus clouds along the central coast. And then as we head towards midday, we are expecting partly cloudy conditions sticking around for your Wednesday and once again towards your Thursday. Although we do have more cloud cover heading our way, the sunshine will still prevail and it does continue as we head all the way into the weekend. We just let go of that cloud cover once Friday comes around due to those gusty northerly winds. So if you are in San Ynez tomorrow morning, bring that sweater with you. You are going to be starting off pretty chilly. Right here we have Ted who got to enjoy from a nice walk this morning alongside the river over San Inez. By midday, it does feel much more comfortable as you get to enjoy from 70 degrees. For Santa Maria, a beautiful sunny day to enjoy, maybe heading out towards the golf course. By 2 p.m., you're looking at 67, and then by 7 p.m., we'll be dropping down to 52 degrees. So our weather pattern not changing a whole lot. We're just going to be cooling down as we go towards midweek. We're still looking at those offshore trends, and it is a very dry offshore event. And unfortunately, relative humidity is going to be reduced even further as we go towards the end of the work week. It is due to the Santa Ana winds that are going to be impacting down towards the south coast. But for us, it still keeps us very dry. It keeps us sunny and it's actually going to allow for our temperatures to warm right back up. So anything we cool down for this Wednesday and Thursday, expect those temperatures to be on the warmer side once Friday comes around and as we continue towards your Saturday and Sunday. So if you're making any plans, uh, expect those very dry fuels in the forecast. However, it is going to be beautiful as we do get to enjoy for mostly clear conditions. And then your future cast winds will be diminishing over night so it does make way for any areas of patchy fog although the marine layer is going to be weak as i showed you it does allow for those conditions as we go towards your wednesday and then winds not expected to return until possibly thursday night going into your friday if you are over san luis obispo county daytime highs into tomorrow for Buellton, you'll be warming to 75 degrees for san inez you're looking at 73 if you are alongside the coastline you'll be feeling the difference as guadalupe is cooling down to 62 degrees we've been in the 70s as of this uh, week Weekend, and it really persisted into early this week. Out towards Orchid, you're looking at 68 for Paso Robles, a daytime high of 70 degrees, along with San Luis Obispo. Avila Beach, you're at 67. And then for Santa Barbara, we'll be warming to 72 degrees. Galita on the cooler side in the lower 70s. Temperatures, as mentioned, will be warming as we go towards your Saturday and Sunday, as you can expect the return of the 70s. That's a look at your forecast. Janelle, back to you. All right, thanks, Julia. Next on News Channel 12 at 6, a highly anticipated reopening for local families. Find out when you can visit the new and improved Russell Park. The city of Santa Maria will soon reopen a neighborhood park that's been given a complete makeover. Russell Park on the city's southwest side has a new lawn, new children's playground, new restrooms, and new energy-efficient lighting. Other improvements include new concrete paths for greater accessibility. The city says it's another example of how it's trying to maintain and improve recreational facilities during these tough times. We absolutely are, and, and uh, we're very proud of, of our ability to open a park during this time. Um, you know, it's a challenging time, but we will continue to provide those services for the community. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in federal and state grant money was used to complete the makeover. The new and improved park is expected to reopen this weekend. And we have time for one last look at the weather with Julia. Hey there, Janelle. Well, we're going to be following that same similar pattern. Very chilly mornings, but then pleasant daytime highs. Santa Maria dropping down to 39 degrees overnight. For Paso Robles, the potential for frost to develop. And then taking a look at your Wednesday's temperatures, we're back into the 70s. Santa Maria a bit cooler at 68 degrees. Janelle, back to you. Thanks, Julia. And stay with us. We've got much more coming up at 630.